Okay, let's learn algebra. And I hope you are as excited as I am because algebra is one of my uh, favorite topics. And if you are an algebra student, you must absolutely understand this. This is one of the most important properties and widely used properties in algebra. And uh, let me go ahead and uh, give you a hint of what the name of this property is. It's the, and there's a D, there's a first word here, and then there's a P, there's a second word. So if you know the names of what I'm gonna be talking about here, go ahead and put that into the comment section. But uh, anyways, I'll tell you exactly what this is in just one second, but first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I have come to the conclusion that all math students can be successful in math. So if you're struggling in math, you can be successful. Believe me, I know this for a fact, but it requires two things. One, you gotta be willing to do the work, and the second thing is you need great math instruction, clear and understanding math instruction. So that's where I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level, definitely check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. By the way, if you're preparing for a test like the GED, SAT, ACT, teacher certification exam, anything with a math section, I can help you out. If you homeschool, I have great homeschool math courses. And if this information in this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as I'm posting a ton of math videos all the time. Okay, so let's get into the, this is called the distributive properties. If you knew that, that is excellent, but uh, let's go ahead and uh, review the distributive property now. All right, so here, formally we would write out uh, the distributive property as this. This is A times B plus C, okay, this is in parentheses, is equal to AB plus AC. So let's take a look at how this works, okay? And I like to, um, to describe the distributive property as another way to do multiplication, okay? So let's look at this problem right here, two times three plus four, okay? Two times three plus four. So let's just think about three plus four. What is three plus four? Well, the last time I checked, that is seven. So really we're doing the problem here is two times seven. So a lot of you are like, okay, well, two times seven, that's just 14. Well, you would be correct, but you're gonna see here in a second, we're gonna need another way to multiply when we're talking about variables. But let's just see the distributive property in action, which is super cool. All right, so this word, the distributive property, if I asked you to, uh, let's say we're at a picnic and I said, hey, uh, go ahead and distribute out the napkins and make sure everyone has a napkin with their nice uh, meal, okay? What does that mean? Well, it means to kind of pass out, right? Pass uh, the napkin there, one there, one there. That's kind of the basic idea of uh, to distribute something, right? But in the distributive property, we're gonna actually be distributing this thing right here, okay? This number on the outside, we can distribute it to these uh, numbers on the inside. So let's see how this works, okay? So here is our two. So we can um, do this problem this way, two times three, that's this A times B. So it's gonna be A, we're gonna distribute to this B, AB, in this case, it's gonna be two times three, plus, okay, A times C, so we're gonna distribute this A to that C, in this case, it'll be two times four, okay? So this is uh, uh, two times three plus four is the same thing as two times three plus two times four. So now we just go ahead and simplify this. Two times three is what? Well, that's six. Two times four is eight. And six plus eight is, of course, 14, which we already knew this because this is seven times two, which is 14. So a lot of you are like, well, what a long way to do this problem. You know, why should I know the distributive property? Well, I'm gonna show you exactly why you need to understand the distributive property. It's such an awesome property. Matter of fact, if I had to um, uh, say, uh, what is my favorite property? I would say the distributive property. So I'll show you a little bit more how cool it is here in a second, but let's actually see why you need this in algebra. So here is the distributive property, but now let's take a look at a situation like this. Here is two times X plus five. So this is a multiplication problem, but now we don't have numbers. Okay, so it's not like uh, two times seven, like the previous problem. Now we're like, oh boy, we got this variable. What do we need to do here? Well, we can apply the distributive property. So it's gonna be two times this X, which is two X, plus two times this five, and that is of course gonna be 10. But just following the property, A parentheses B plus C, it's A times B 
plus, this is a plus right here, a times c right there. Now this can be minus as well, just to be very clear about it, you could have a times b minus c, and that's equal to a b minus a c. Okay, so it doesn't always have to be um, addition, it could be subtraction as well, but it's a sum or difference, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and finish this up. Two times x is two x, and then of course two times five is 10. So two times x plus five is equal to two x plus 10. So this is where the real application in algebra comes into play. Uh, when you see something like this with a number outside of a sum or difference where there's a variable going on, you're gonna have to apply the distributive property. And I've seen countless students uh, make this error. They'll do something like two times X plus five and they'll uh, go like, oh, two X or they'll do, they'll go real quick and they'll go two X plus five. They for, uh, forget to distribute this number or value to all the, the terms on the inside. So it's two X and then they'll forget to go two times five. So they'll make a mistake like that. Okay, so you really, really want to understand the distributive property. It's gonna save you a lot of um, uh, errors when you're solving equations and everything in algebra, okay? It's probably used, uh, probably like 90% of the problems, you're doing something that involves uh, the distributive property. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue to practice this. Let's do another problem. Actually, we'll uh, wrap up with these two problems here. And uh, then I want to show you another example how cool the distributive property is. So if you want to go ahead and pause the video and do these two problems right now, I think that would be a good use of your time. Okay, actually, let me go ahead and scoot these down here so we can just focus in on the problems themselves. But let's go ahead and do this problem here. Okay, so what is the answer? Well, it's going to be what? 3 times 2y, which is what? 6y, okay? So I'm distributing this uh, three. Now this is a subtraction situation. Again, I remember I told you that the distributive property works with addition and subtraction. Okay, but what you're really looking for is parentheses. Okay, a sum or a difference. So this is gonna be three times four, which of course is 12. So if you got six Y minus 12, well then let me go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and a check mark for being such a great math student. All right, let's go ahead and do this next problem. So this one's a bit different because guess what? We just don't have two terms now. We have a whole bunch of terms. Well, we have three, but the distributive property can be as many terms as you want on the inside. There's no rule there. So in other words, you can have A times um, B plus C plus D plus E plus F. You can just keep going. And the answer is gonna be what? A, B plus A, C plus A, D just goes on and on and on. So you would just distribute to all the terms on the inside, okay? But they're separated by addition and subtraction. All right, so let's go ahead and do this problem. So this is gonna be five times two X squared, which would be what? 10 X squared, and then five times X is five uh, X, all right? We wanna be real careful about this. And then five times this minus one is minus five. Okay, so again, yeah, you're looking at these parentheses, uh, the terms are separated by addition and subtraction signs, then you can just uh, distribute this number to all these terms on the inside. Okay, so again, you gotta wanna be really, really good and very, very careful when using the distributive property. It is the key to doing many, many different types of algebra problems. Okay, so if you got this right as well, then I must go ahead and give you a couple more extra check marks. There's nothing better than getting like A plus is 100%. So if you got these right, and if you knew everything about the distributive property, then you know, you're well on your way from being an algebra superstar. But let's go ahead and take a look at how cool the distributive property is. So let's take a look at 40. Okay, the number 40. And now let's think about uh, different products of 40, things that, uh, that we can kind of factor uh, 40. So for example, 40 is the same thing as four times 10. So I could say, all right, 40 is four times 10, but let's see how we can get this 40. But we're gonna uh, use the distributive property. So 40 is the same thing as four times 10, and I can write 10 as five plus five, right? I can write 10 as five plus five, so now, uh, recognizing this as a sum, and I got a number on the outside, I can just use the distributive property if I want to do this uh, this problem. Okay, so let's say, all right, here I got 40. Uh, this would be uh, 4 times 5, which is 20, plus another 4 times 5, which is 20, and 20 uh, plus 20 is, of course, 40. 
Okay. So you might be saying, well, you know, uh, what's the value here? Well, it really comes in to play when you're trying to simplify a large values. When you can break things up using a distributor property, it was actually very, very helpful. All right. So here, um, well, I can write 40 as the factors of eight times five, and I can write five, for example, uh, four as four times one. I can write it as three times two as well. Guess what? I'll always get the right answer. So eight times four is 32 plus eight times one is eight and 32 and eight again is 40. So this is uh, just kind of to reinforce how cool the distributor property is and it works in all sorts of situations. And then lastly, I can write uh, 40 as five times eight and five times or um, uh, five, eight, I can write as six plus two. Okay, so I can just take this five and then multiply again so that five times six is 30 plus five times two is 10 again, 40. All right, so if you weren't convinced that the distributor property works, it does work. Uh, and it's an absolute critical property, a must-know um, uh, property for your success in algebra. So if you were confused with the distributor property, hopefully this video cleared up any uh, confusion. And if that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. By the way, if you're new to my YouTube channel, I have over a thousand plus videos on my channel from basic math to advanced math, like calculus and everything in between. So please take advantage of my content. I am posting math videos all the time, but my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.